meaning according to the math, they started dating within a few months of Flo turning 16 when he was 33. Literally less than half his age. <laughs> Jesus, man. Officer, right there. FBI, Come on, me. Hello, friends. Trace Amounts of Science. Today, we've got another neckbeard story. Seems like a neckbeard one-off from my personal subreddit, r slash redxreads. Uh, this is somewhat to prove that I can be nice to new posters. It's true. You shouldn't be scared of me, you know, as long as you're not being a douchebag in the story, then uh, I think we'll we'll get along amicably. So we'll see how it goes today as we jump into the story of Nex, written by user Anand Stories. Nice to meet you, OP. And he says, greetings, Red X. Hello there. I've been listening to your stories via Spotify for a while now. Oh, I gotta get back on that. <laughs> Moby Vic especially helped during several long road trips while I moved states, and I've been on and off toying with the idea of writing out my experiences with my former best friend. Is this like a beards of a feather situation? You kinda outgrew it and he didn't? Yeah, it happens sometimes. He's one that I'm sure still follows my main account, so I'm using my alt to post. Last thing I need is him calling the police about feeling harassed, but now I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm not the best or most engaging writer, but I'll give it my best shot. I mean, look at this. You got punctuation, you got paragraphs. I don't know what else I could ask for. I don't vet stories too hard, but at a glance, it does look, you know, readable, at least. <laughs> the cast is as follows. OP, male, 40 plus. That's our OP. A uh, special education teacher and event coordinator. Nex is also male, 40 plus, and he is the former best friend, manipulative creep, who kept me in the dark about a lot of his transgressions. Kank, because that's how we probably got to say it on YouTube, is a uh, female and 40 plus, current friend, very energetic, and has numerous side ventures, from selling tea to seamstress. Hell yeah, make that money any way you could get it, I'll tell you. <laughs> Flo, spoilers, Nex's still current partner, generally really kind and talented individual. Yeah, it ain't her fault she shacked up with a loser. I mean, sort of it is, but you know, lessons to learn, it's fine. <laughs> I need to tell you more about my former best friend. I had met this guy, Nex, at Boy Scout camp, and then later college where we became fast friends and roommates. We were into a lot of the same hobbies and had a complimentary sense of humor. We were close to the point that we had three different girlfriends that dated each of us in different years of our lives and at the time, we were cool with it. Yeah, ain't no fun if the homies can't get some. <laughs> it feels a little weird to me, but I mean, I'm glad that you guys are okay with it, I guess. Just pass them right along. <laughs> We checked in with the other to see if there was a problem with all this, and there rarely was. Even after we started drifting apart for a bit after college, I was down on my luck and needed a job and a way to get to work as I could no longer afford a car, and he got me an interview at his workplace in my field and offered to commute with me to and from work. I just had to help with gas. He was a fantastic friend for my college and early adult life. That is, until he wasn't anymore. Yeah, friendships do be like that, but it seems like he's down for the cause, you know? It's hard to thumb your nose at somebody who, who got you hired when you needed to get hired. Although, thinking back, I have done it before. There was a kid that got me hired at the gas station, and he was like, Oh, I'm only gonna stay for half the month. I'm like, you need to pay half the rent. And he's like, no, I'm not gonna do that. So I put all this stuff out on the street. <laughs> Thank you very much for the job, but don't fuck with my living situation. So yeah, things can turn on a dime. Anywho, OP says there would be cracks early on, but nothing drastic or out of the norm. A disagreement about this, butting heads about that, and some ribbing at his expense. I mean, if we're gonna go that way, you gotta let him raz you just a little bit too. That only seems fair. OP says overall, it was nothing all that crazy. In hindsight, there were lots of signs of issues forming in our friendship and just what kind of person he really was. One issue that continued to crop up was his choice in partners, specifically his current partner. Did you date his current partner before he got to her? If we're taking issue with his choice in partners, then probably we all also have to take issues with, with your choice in partners, since they're the same partners. <laughs> <laughs> At least sometimes. What did he say? Three times? That's three too many for me, bro. <laughs> anyway. 
Here's some backstory. We both ran a cosplay club for our state and had a large range of individuals that would attend. Oh, cosplay. That's how you know it's gonna get weird. <laughs> I don't believe in violence. I don't believe in violence. <laughs> Teens, adults, families, you name it. Many of these people would be our friends, and others would sometimes reach out for advice or for help, as we were both educators and were seen as trustworthy individuals. So when some individuals would contact him regularly and become friends, the age difference of some didn't even register as really being an issue, as similarly aged individuals would reach out to me as well for advice on cosplay or conventions. I mean, I guess I wouldn't be too sussy if it's all work-based, but, like, it needs to stay work-based. Interact with the children as little as possible. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah, people might think it's a little bit weird. So after the separation of his previous partner of three years, we were all pretty surprised how quickly Nex bounced back with his current partner that I'll name Flo. Flo was a nice enough girl, with a couple of health concerns that would limit what she was able to do, but she was an active cosplayer and extremely talented at it. When she first showed up at our next in-person gathering, they disclosed that they were 21. Mind you, at the time, me and my friend were 33. Was that 12-year age gap? Yeah. You're at pretty different points in your life. I find it fairly egregious, but probably I would keep it to myself. At least until other signs start appearing. After the gathering, he pulled me aside and said he'd be honest with me and that Flo was actually 18. <laughs> God, dude. Yeah, that makes it even worse. Uh, you double her age, essentially. 15 years, it only gets worse. I don't like it, dude. She doesn't know what she wants yet. I mean, he definitely knows what he wants, but yeah, he's not thinking more than like one step ahead. And he knows it's creepy because he's he's hiding it. <laughs> if you if you think it makes you look creepy, then don't do it. Don't do it. It's really simple. I thanked him and simply said, well, that was a legal dating age, and as long as they were both happy and healthy, I really had no right to say anything. And that's true. I wouldn't say anything either. But I would rub my chin and say, hmm, quite a lot. <laughs> Jump ahead about 16 months to the fall. I was having issues following my own relationship. They had dumped me the day before I planned a multi-week trip to Germany. Honestly, better before the vacation than after. I was obviously crushed and had all the time to stew on it as my PC had crashed, bad CPU, and my car had broken down. Damn, maybe we shouldn't go to Germany. Maybe we should spend some money putting the PC and car back together. <laughs> Those are money-making things, you see? The multi-week trip is it, just a vacation. You ain't gonna make any money off that. But I don't know, we all make choices. Have fun, I guess. <laughs> Upon the now ex's return, they asked to talk about getting together again. And we decided to discuss it in person rather than over the phone. Oh, they're the ones that went to Germany. I'm stupid. She just wanted some uncut German schnitzel, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> schnitzel! Mommy, mommy, I want a schnitzel stick! Oh, the schnitzel <laughs> uh, I had called Nex the night prior with my concerns about getting back together with the ex. I mean, how could I trust them in the long term when they couldn't even stick around for the short term? Yeah, don't do it. I wouldn't do it. That's just falling back into bad habits. We had our time together. Now it's over. You're the one that decided it's over. So I'm moving on. On to the next. During my convo with Nex, he mentions Flo was denied a staff position at an event that both of us work at. And I remarked, having been asked who Flo was by event staff, as they had noticed Flo was a friend of mine on Facebook. So the next day, during the discussion with the ex, I started getting a series of texts from Nex berating me, saying that I was bad-mouthing their partner, and now I want nothing to do with you. Again, that's your decision? Farewell. <laughs> I called in the middle of the discussion with my current ex, and Nex claimed that I had caused Flo to be denied the position at the convention that we were both staff at and that I had given the convention chair a poor impression of her. To clarify, when I talked to event staff, I mentioned who Flo was dating, their age, their cosplay skills, and that they were still new to convention staffing. 
That's why I don't comment on anything. They're like, I noticed your friends with her on Facebook. I'm like, hey, I don't know. It's just some bitch. <laughs> Is that better? Is that worse? I don't know. Uh, after the call with Nex ended, I was devastated. He was my best friend for years, and it felt like he was not only ignoring my responses, but had already made the decision to cut off years of friendship. Yeah, it sucks to suck, but you won't catch me out here trying to salvage it. You made your choice. That's fine. I was glad to know you once upon a time. For some reason, OP's ex decided to talk him into doing it to quote unquote cheer me up. <laughs> Which, during said session, my ex claimed we were now going to get back together. Yeah, you think it's all gender? Oh, cheer me up, that sounds nice. Nah, she got her own game plan. <laughs> you need to see through that. We're broken up already. We don't do it together anymore. Don't fall for that shit. OP says, I snapped to my senses and felt incredibly manipulated. <laughs> Which kind of you were. That's what happens when you follow your dong, you know? I asked her to leave and told her I did not want to get back together. Upset and pissed, she drove not home, but to Nex's house. Oh, she's scandalous, bro. She, she meant for the streets, bro. <laughs> She belongs to the streets. Uh, don't do this. Don't do this. She told him I had continued talking poorly of Flo after the conversation, a fact which was confirmed by Nex and later the ex when we both gained closure from this entire mess. This action solidified the split of myself and Nex. It is pretty scandalous, though. The girlfriend, like, she's like, I'm taking your best friend down with me. <laughs> uh, Oh well, I guess we have no one. We're starting from zero. It's fine, people do it every day. <laughs> it ended up not taking more than a few days for news to spread in our clubs and friend circles that we were no longer talking. However, instead of people consoling me, I found many people coming out of the woodwork to share horror stories of next that they did not feel comfortable sharing while we were close friends. <laughs> yes, let me tell you what a weirdo you were friends with. I guess I probably wouldn't involve myself either because that rumor mill, it do keep turning. However, a rather large part of me does want to know. <laughs> Just as a favor to me, please tell me. If somebody's doing some weird shit, I, I have to know, okay? So these people were a wide range of individuals, from former group members that had suddenly left, to close friends who had kept their opinions quiet, knowing that I was still very close to him. From these stories, I found out several disturbing details that, in hindsight, made perfect sense. Oh, now I know what all those ponies and jars were when I went over to his house. <laughs> Warning. Hazardous radiation levels detected. Uh, they just weren't full yet, you see? The first thing I found out about was Flo. A mutual had been suspicious about what her actual age was after seeing an article in a local newspaper years back. Oh, the plot thickens. It shared a high school group that had started a card gaming club at a local store. This article included Flo, and it was still very recent, making the mutual friend question the accuracy of the age claim. Remember, he and Flo had told and posted their age as 21, so the suspicion had merit. She's lying about being even 18. <laughs> Jesus, dude. Uh, how, how far to the depths can we descend? This is something you should have told. I'd be mad at you for not telling me, honestly. So I went back into previous discussions I had with Nex to try and find where he had mentioned in age to show that she was 18. However, I stopped at a previous discussion about the gym. See, I had recently started going that year, and Nex wanted to sign himself and flow up for it as well. Hell yeah, gym bros, bro. Honestly, I think it's a lot easier to go to the gym by myself. Just meet with the trainer. <laughs> That's the only person even halfway holding me accountable. <laughs> what had escaped my notice previously was in a follow-up discussion that Nex and OP had had. Nex had mentioned that Flo could not be at the gym, quote, without parental consent. Oh, that's fine. Just adopt her and become her legal guardian. Surely nothing will go wrong. Can we get him against the wall, please? Do the parents know anything about that? Yeah, my daughter dates a guy who's 33. It's fine. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Maybe the parents don't know. Maybe that's why the parental consent thing is a problem. But yeah, I'm pretty sure I'd like to see this person beat to death with a Red X Industries brand lead pipe. 
No hollow spaces of fillers in these Red X Industries brand lead pipes. No, indeed, that's four kilograms of pure justice seeking lead. <laughs> So OP says, I went and looked up the gym and I found their age policy and found that they required parental consent from individuals who are below the age of 18. Hmm, meaning according to the math, they started dating within a few months of Flo turning 16 when he was 33. Literally less than half his age. <laughs> Jesus, man. Officer, right there. Uh, why is it gotta be like this? This is why I'm always all up in my daughter's face. I'm like, who's Prince? Who's Vance? Tell me about this person. Where are they like? <laughs> are they driven at school? OP does say that unfortunately, in our state, it is still legal for them to date, but that doesn't make it right. You're right, it doesn't. This type of behavior should be shamed. Otherwise, you got a bunch of coon-brained weirdos hanging out outside the high schools trying to uh, pick up a snack. <laughs> it's weird, it's uncomfortable, it's Chris Hansen to catch a predator vibes. Why don't you have a seat? Except Chris Hansen's not here! Nobody seems to like Chris Hansen anymore, what happened guys? <laughs> <laughs> Shocked by that first revelation, I started reaching out to people. I remember Nex having blocked or talked poorly about or otherwise who stopped interacting with me due to my relationship with Nex. And one of those was a girl who was 15 at the time they had interacted with him. Oh my god. The rabbit hole goes so deep, man. <laughs> The conversation that followed was beyond eye-opening. Imagine having half a conversation in the form of puzzle pieces and as the other person talks and lays their pieces down, your pieces fit perfectly and a whole picture of a jealous, creepy, perverted teacher with a superiority complex and a desire for control developed. Wait, he's, he's a teacher? I thought OP was a special ed teacher. Is that how Nex is doing this? He's he's picking off the, the autistic ones? <laughs> he's like, put on the gamer girl headset. Who want the cat ears? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That is so dark, dude. Why not report him to administration? What is happening? The 30-something year old that chases after 15 year olds has a desire for control? You don't say. <laughs> I'm so uncomfortable with this. OP says, I felt both elated and blinded, being shown just how he had twisted the narrative in the group to cover up his actions and silenced many who felt assaulted by his actions. Yeah, Beard's are good at one thing, it's, it's social tinkering, isn't it? I began digging through years of previous conversations and seeing levels of myself being manipulated using my own trauma experiences against me, enough straw man arguments to safely fund Ezio's building diving escapades, I understood that reference, and playing off legitimate concerns and issues as either drama or acting like he was the victim. I mean, I'd like some examples, but it's an abridged sort of one-off thing, I guess, so I'll take you at your word. I also eventually caught on to a pattern of him actively trying to ruin or prevent previous relationships for me with people he either showed interest in or would later on date. <laughs> so weird. He's like, I don't want to find my own milady. I want yours. Okay, bro. At least come correct. Like, we could fight about it. And still, she picked me anyways. <laughs> Win or lose, she's right there. Ride or die. OP says, this wasn't just people he would later pursue, either. If Nex couldn't be with an individual, then I couldn't be with that individual. I actually took count, and he ruined six potential or active relationships, and later dated two of those exes. All the dating dynamic and shit is just too weird. <laughs> I don't know, I I'm glad I'm past it. I'm really surprised that you couldn't see it in the moment, but yeah. Lessons learned, as always. Additionally, I was also getting griefed by his loyal group of followers at the time. Yeah, social engineering beard probably does have followers. In one very specific instance, my phone was being blown up at one convention in particular while I was on stage. Simultaneously, my Facebook posts about the weekend were similarly being trashed by the same individual, and those comments were still being liked by people living in Nex's household. 
Oh, that's how he maintains controls. I mean, I guess he's a 30-year-old man. So he just gathers a bunch of teenagers and, and builds his island of misfit toys. Nobody here is going to fix each other. They're just like, I'm a squirt gun that shoots jam. It's like, well, why, can't, why can't we fill you up with water? He's like, nope, I only squirt jam. <laughs> or a water pistol that shoots jelly. <laughs> this is stupid. Just a super weird situation. It's sort of like the familial relations. What do we, what do we call it? <laughs> Family values house that Aerith wrote a while back. Anyway, OP says the direct texts eventually started demanding that I apologize to Flo. Still not sure for what. I think merely for my existence. <laughs> and I had to apologize that very moment or else. Well, I ended up choosing else. There you go. Now it's your move again, fucko. <laughs> Four months after our split, I got a picture of an olive branch in my Facebook Messenger from Nex. I inquired if this was a sign of wanting to try and mend fences, and below is the conversation that transpired. Dude, don't say the thing for him just because he sent you a picture. What the fuck I'm supposed to do with a picture of a tree? <laughs> so yes, Nex sent the picture and OP said, okay, I'm all ears. He didn't even have to say anything and you, you opened the door again? Fuck that! Send it back a picture of an olive branch lit on fire. <laughs> uh, I guess you've known each other for a long time, but that means by this point you should be like, aware of the bullshit. <laughs> uh, OP says, uh, I feel like I've tried a lot to open discussion and right now I need to know you're serious about healing some of this because what happened and how it happened hurt a lot. Next, it hurt me quite a lot as well. I think there's a lot of gray area between ye old Nexus drama and ye old OP stupid. And I'm hoping you can agree with me somewhere along those lines. Jesus. To see it in the Beard's own voice is, it really does <laughs> hit different, doesn't it? Ugh! Why is my stupid stupid and your stupid is drama? That don't make no sense. <laughs> what are you talking about? But instead, OP says, I'm willing to work through it and talk things out. That door was never closed. Close it, OP. Close it and lock it. <laughs> Don't open the door. I'm gonna eat your ass, boy. Know that it will be a slow process, and I don't see myself getting to a point even close to where we were before for a long time. Uh, fair enough. As far as between us, yes, of course, I'm going to be protective of Flo. If someone talks ill of her, no matter the context, I'm going to take some degree of offense. Talks ill of her? Like mentioning her actual age that you don't want anybody to know? <laughs> Are you angry at me for stating a fact? <laughs> From my perception, you openly admitted to it. Had a conversation with X, and then X slowly let it out to us over dinner. Because she was torn between not wanting to get in the middle of it, and not wanting us to be blindsided. Well, it sounds like X wasn't the safest person to go to, was she? <laughs> uh, that's hilarious. Well, never trusted her again. <laughs> Next continues, do I have some thoughts that it may have been related to you wanting to bring out-of-state influence more into cosplay community in our state? Yes, it's passed my mind a few times. Dude, what the hell are we talking about right now? <laughs> Does it run contrary to what I'm doing in state with trying to get state cosplayers more involved through my work and cosplay group? Yes, that has also crossed my mind at times. Oh, that's right. Cosplay teachers. Yeah, so they're really getting some weirdos, piling them up in a house together. Nex is just trying not to cross state lines because he doesn't want government or law enforcement looking into things. <laughs> <laughs> Next says, one of my other issues was that you got mad at me and were telling me off before an event we were both participating in because Flo's friend got pissy at you. Because Flo was still very hurt by your comments about her to a convention chair. What were the comments? That she was new? That she's not as good at cosplay as she thinks she is? Probably the second one's incendiary. But both are kind of deserved. 
Next concludes with as for my dead silence. It's sort of half and half. Wondering if there'd ever be a token apology. You're just being busy with all the other things I need to get done in my life. Oh yes, life and living is so hard, isn't it? Didn't things feel a lot more functional before people started complaining about adulting? Yeah, you have to run fucking errands, everybody does. I'll do all my crap, show up to a 4pm business meeting, not mention a word about the difficult day I had, come home at 8pm to a hot roast beef and an ether frolic in my living room. <laughs> Ah, I feel like that should have been done in the Grandpa Redex voice. It's fine. <laughs> so this apology pissed me off immensely. Yeah, me too, dude. I'm not reading past the first message. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Don't call somebody stupid in your apology. What are you doing? <laughs> Starting off by saying he made drama whereas I was being stupid. That he's never followed up with any source about what was or wasn't said. And outright refused to do so from the con chair themselves in one instance, that he thought this was some part of a devious plot to take over the local cosplay group and bring outside influences, being cosplayers from any other state, which in itself, of course, is incredibly ridiculous. After some choice words, obviously I can post screenshots, I ended the apology with the following, and apologies in quotes. OP said, in the end, I was more pissed with how easy this seemed for you. After tens of years of friendship, you would be so easy to toss me aside. Listen to my ex-girlfriend, who I refused to take back that very day, and just showed zero emotion or care about the issue. It's not because I didn't care, it's because I'm a Sagittarius. <laughs> that it was so easy for you to just cut me out from your life and burn that bridge. That is what hurt more than anything. LP is like definitely a, a Pisces or a Cancer, like he just clings on a little bit, but sometimes like a little too much. Truth be told, I don't think you should be hurt by things that other people do, because yeah, they have their reasons for doing them, that's fine. The only thing I can control is myself, and it doesn't seem like this bridge is getting unburnt, so why be sad about it? Yeah, we had some good times when he was out there breaking me up with six girlfriends and dating a couple of them. <laughs> uh huh. OP continues, am I sorry for hurting Flo's feelings? Yes, of course I am. You should know more than anyone that I'm a heart on my sleeve guy that doesn't like hurting those around him. It hurt him a little bit. It's just like, you know, enough to make him feel they're alive and stuff. <laughs> and now I need to get to bed for work. I don't know if anything I said help or hurt, but what I've said is from me. I have no reason to make stuff up at this point. I've already been hurt enough to make some false bridge constructed of lies just to try and make amends, so have a pleasant evening, sir. Yes, a most pleasant evening. I wouldn't have done it, dude. Should have punched much harder than you did. You kept up here with some stupid shit like this, I'm gonna scratch your eyeballs out. <laughs> with that, I blocked him. And not only him, but his roommate and partner as well. I knew in the past that he had not been above trying to contact or spy on people through other people's Facebook accounts. I had seen him do so once before, via Flo's account, in fact. I wanted to wash my hands of him, but with how interconnected our friends and hobbies were, I knew this would continue. And we did, in fact, have numerous casual and sometimes even more direct run-ins. What you've got to do is, is plot and scheme. Get him out of the hobby. Nah, but hope he's, you know, he's a hard on sleep guy. What you see is what you get type of stuff. But I'm just saying, sometimes there's nothing wrong with a little cloak and dagger, you know? <laughs> Ask the government, they know. <laughs> a month after the messages, there was a small one day event that I enjoyed staffing. In between events, me and my co-coordinator would come out and promote the passing crowds to come or stay in seats for their upcoming event. And in the center of that field of chairs, Nex was sitting there, no one around, glaring at me like a third grader who was told he can't go outside for recess. Weird, dude. You know, security's only like a, a walkie-talkie chirp away. <laughs> Uh, maybe we consider just, you know, having him ejected, forcibly. It's either that or you go out there right now and hit him with the empty chair next to him. <laughs> Don't even fold it up, just BLAM! 
slam as <laughs> hard as he can. Yeah. He'll get the message. <laughs> we went back behind the curtain and I had a little chuckle. A few minutes later, participants from the previous event were coming backstage to get anything they left behind while they were performing. Amongst them was Flo, who came backstage to grab their instrument. As she did so, she stopped next to me, gave a very quiet, I'm so sorry, and then left. That stuck with me, as it did feel sincere. Might have been, honestly. As an aside, I will say that before everything got shut down for the virus of ill intent, I did have one moment where I got to speak with Flo without Nex around, and the vibe I got was that they didn't wholly believe what was said, and they didn't want Nex to go to the extent that they did, that they missed talking to me but understood why I wouldn't, and that their conditions have continued to worsen, and they now rely on Nex for nearly everything in their life. All is working as un intended, unfortunately. Like, you almost want to stay on board and be a lifeline for Flo and all that, despite Nex's toxicity, but it's not worth it. Sometimes you gotta learn the hardest lessons yourself. I can't save you because deep down in your heart you know the right thing to do and you're not doing it. OP says there were plenty of moments where we sort of passed by each other, but never interacted or engaged. The next instance of note, however, was later in the fall. I had received a message from a staff member at a super small convention, ironically the last one we had attended as friends, Nex and I, about how to move forward with an event called Cosplay Deathmatch. That actually sounds cool. Call anything a deathmatch and all of a sudden it's like, I'm in. <laughs> OP says that he had run this event and it's a common event that a lot of conventions of varying size and even some cosplay adjacent events will run all called Deathmatch in some respect. He brought up running it himself and wanting to call it a Coliseum. When pressed as to why, he eventually said it was to distance the event from me. Ooh. <laughs> An act that Flo apparently voiced in the meeting, which was a little bit ridiculous. More than a little bit ridiculous, Flo is not who you think she is. This tells me she's not sorry about nothing. <laughs> All right, you've chosen sides. You've chosen poorly. But you will soon learn. OP though, chill guy, doesn't even get amped up about it. <laughs> he says, I had a good laugh about that small tale and made a Facebook post stating how the word Coliseum had never made me laugh more than that day. Later that day, I received a text message from Nex that read as follows. Oh boy, we really gonna take this one out of context, aren't we? <laughs> Nex, seriously, grow the hell up. I don't know what your damn issue is, but you need to start backing down. I've been informed by three people that you were spreading malicious rumors about me in the past month. If you don't stop the mockery and rumor mongering, I will look into taking you to court for slander and libel. <laughs> I'm sure that'll stick. I've stayed out of your life, including not applying for events you assist in running, so I formally request that you stay out of mine. I mean, the only reason OP even heard about this is because of the rumor mongering. Although, I wouldn't have posted about it. It's a funny little thing just for myself. Even talking about it in the open says that, yeah, the, the door is not yet locked or closed. I thought you blocked, did you unblock him? Is he messaging him from somebody else's account? I don't know what's going on. Uh, OP says then, in a moment of pure genius, he sent a screenshot of my Facebook post as some sort of gotcha moment. Now his entire household was blocked, and my profile is friends only, so if someone was actively spying on my posts for him. Yeah, this is what happens when you got like a bigger friend circle, just a den of snakes. <laughs> you keep like two, three, four close ones, that's all you need. Thankfully, he didn't crop the screenshot that was sent to him of my post, and it had the profile of the post below it with a name. I searched for the name, and there was only one mutual friend in common, so I silently thanked him for outing his spy and blocked them as well. <laughs> That's a gotcha on the gotcha. An old reverse uno! This triggered a massive reaction from him, of course. I would receive screenshots of posts he'd make publicly on his social media, as well as the cosplay group's social media, all saying that there is drama, that I'm harassing Flo, and some combination of the statement, I don't even bother hearing their version of events. 
<laughs> and that is a personal issue after he spent two to four paragraphs talking about how I'm a bad person. Honestly, don't even bother addressing it. Let it all come out in the wash. Because if you start trying to defend yourself from these accusations, then you're already on the defensive. If you really want to go to war, you got to whip up some accusations of your own. <laughs> That's how debate is done in this day and age. Now we are approaching the firestorm that hit him. And if I'm honest, I was the least involved in these events compared to others, though I did watch them from a distance. Yeah, hopefully with some joy. <laughs> he first got called out by a regular of the cosplay community after being removed from the group. The individual shared screenshots of the conversations with Nex for the community to read, showing Nex berating the member for essentially talking back to him by bringing up the member's deceased father multiple times, saying that his dad wouldn't be proud of him. Jesus, dude. Would he think of this member as a man? He would hope the dad had taught him how to treat women nobly. <laughs> uh, yes, you must be a valiant knight like me. I have many maidens in my castle, although they all have to go to high school between 8 and 3. <laughs> and, uh, the second firestorm came on the backs of the Me Too movement, where numerous women came forward claiming necks approached them, and in at least one instance, essayed them when they were between 15 to 17 years old. Dude, do we need to hear any more? If we can't execute him, at least like firebomb his whole life, you know? If there's any justice in the universe, he'll be a homeless vagrant by next month. <laughs> I recognize two of the names from previous members of the community. One of the former group chairs, let's call her Kank, collected stories from these women and filed reports in the necessary towns against Nex. Well, there you go. It's all coming together. Oh, yes. I was even called by a detective assigned to the case and gave a one-hour interview over the phone about our history and sent over every screenshot from our previous interactions. Boy, oh boy, they're digging deep. <laughs> they're gonna find something to stick him with. I got another call from the detective a few weeks later asking if I was familiar with Gaia Online. Oh no! It all loops back to Gaia, doesn't it? <laughs> I said I recall making a profile in college, but not going further than an hour or so looking through it and then deactivating the account some months later. I was asked if I ever went by a particular handle, which I had since forgotten the name given, but I was able to clarify that that was not a handle that I had used, and I showed that I had the same or similarly themed screen names on all my other social media. Well, that's not great for OPSEC. Now he's on Gaia Online masquerading as you. <laughs> the detective thanked me and said the name in question had shown up as part of the evidence given of Nex's action towards younger group members. And when confronted, he stated that the screen name was mine and that those questionable conversations must have been made by me. Holy God, like some sloppy police work and OP could seriously go to jail for what this other dude did. Thankfully, Obviously, that didn't fly with the detective. From what trickled down to me, Nex lost or walked away from his teaching job, and I don't know what he does. Homeless vagrant, yes! <laughs> He's also been blacklisted from every convention in his home state and every con in the three-state radius. There was only one last con that he was still allowed at, but I heard rumors that he had been banned just last month which prompted me into thinking of all these events. Sounds like some good justice to me, although probably he just went to another state and did the exact same thing. He's like, oh, gotta, gotta check the ancient consent laws before I go. <laughs> You're awful. As a small fuck you to next, Kank was still in charge of one of the group texts. He helped multiple group texts for the chairs for one club and kicked everyone else out of the group before adding myself and several others who were tired of his crap. Another chair stayed in the group long enough to send us regular updates, as well as copies of documents that he would send to members to fill out, including questionnaires to members about what they like or want, etc. And the forum was full of telling next to, in the simplest terms, eat shit. <laughs> what can we improve upon? Get that creep out of here. <laughs> oh, we could do that. To my knowledge, he still lives in the same home with the same people that he did years ago and still monitors social media for anything that could even perceivably be about him. 
no life and harder than ever. Well, I guess that's a way you can go. Just last year, I heard he called the cops for cyberbullying when Kank made a post on the community dedicated to calling out dangerous or creepy individuals who go to conventions. And he just, like, self-identified with that? That's hilarious. <laughs> uh, they're talking about me! <laughs> well, thanks for telling on yourself, little guy. <laughs> Kank showed all their posts to the officers, along with the receipts of Nex's history, to which the officer apologized for bothering them, saying Nex wasted his time, and Kank took the moment to report and fill out paperwork for harassment against him. In my opinion, Nex is a small man with a massive superiority and control complex. I won't say he didn't help me in some times of need, but that doesn't excuse him being a garbage person that needs to be held accountable for everything he's done to the community and to all of his victims. Yes, all of his quite underage victims. I hate it, dude. He, he was burnt to the ground, but he wasn't burnt quite low enough for my liking. We gotta go at least six feet deep, if you know what I'm saying. There's a chance that maybe he flips it all around, but I don't know, man. 33? He's been living like this for a long time. He doesn't seem to want to change. Troubling. But at least he's not troubling you anymore, I guess, OP. I hope you guys enjoyed the story. If you did, join up on the Patreon. Maybe the YouTube memberships. I'd appreciate that so much. Always remember that you are loved, you are worthy, you definitely, definitely deserve it, friends. And I shall see you in the next one. So until then, bye bye.